Hey everyone, how are you? It is the Library Love Fest team back with another episode of Door to Door. We are here with a very special guest today, Katie O'Callaghan, Director of Marketing at Harper Books at HarperCollins, and she's going to talk to us about books that she is loving. But first, let's do a round robin in this Brady Bunch square minus two. So I'm Virginia. <laughs> hey, I'm Chris. Hey, it's Lainey. And I'm Katie. <laughs> Katie and Chris have managed to get far, far away while Lainey and I are sitting in our rooms <laughs> with no virtual background, <laughs> but it's just as much background. love. So, so we're gonna, so we're gonna hear from Katie, and she's gonna talk to us about uh, some books that she's working on that she's loving. Uh, Katie's been at Harper for what ten years, almost ten years, right? Katie, almost ten years, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you you know we should talk a little, we should talk a little bit about some of the other books that you've worked on just to give people sort of a frame of reference, and then you can talk about the books that you're um, loving. But I think before we do any of that, we have to. We don't have to. We want to. <laughs> uh, it's National Library Week, and now more than ever, we want to sh tell you all how much we appreciate all that you are have done are doing, continuing to do, especially in the face of this terrible pandemic. Um, but we, uh, we want to honor you and we want to toast to you. We might toast to you several times throughout this presentation. But for now, our inaugural toast for today's Door to Door. To you librarians, thank you. The keepers of the gate, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> From your various ports in the storm, we honor you during this week and always. So. I think we should go around and say what we're drinking. All right. All of this. Next. Josh. Josh. I remember Josh fondly I, from. I, I love to, uh, this, Josh. I by love the way. Josh. Josh Not is good. A paid spokesperson. Oh. <laughs> I'm but I think. Um, oh, Lainey, what's your what's oh. your beverage? I have a uh, a hard cider, rose hard cider because on brand for me um <laughs> but also i found it deep in my fridge forgot i had it <laughs> so i'm excited that i found it that's wonderful christopher i'm I just have a classy glass of water i'll be honest i had a few <laughs> ipas last night and i uh i, I think i worked i worked myself out of that I'm, i'm i need a day off <laughs> so it's just it's just beautiful life-giving water life-giving like libraries <laughs> And librarians. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. All that right. Good. It's hard to top. I have a little, it's hard to see in my green screen, a little tiki glass to go with the uh, the summer tiki hut theme, but I'm having a nice little Brooklyn summer ale because I, I miss the city very much. <laughs> and uh, it seems like a very summery thing to do. So that's that. Mm. Let's see. It looks like uh, Janet yeah. Lockhart is sipping hot cider honey bush tea. So she is joining us in spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Susan Riley says hello. Vicki Nesting, Casey Davis, Anne Gil Martin. Of course, Janet Lockhart, like I said. Uh, many of our friends are here. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I think Virginia might be, I can't hear Virginia. Can you? <laughs> Virginia, can you hear us? I pushed the mute button on my laptop <laughs> by mistake. That'll do it. Sorry. <laughs> I blame Josh. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, Katie, go ahead. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the highlights that you've done, uh, worked on at Harper, and then tell us about what you're excited about. We, we, we have a, a love fest for a bunch of books that you're working on. Yes. Um, so over the years, I've worked on so many different types of books at Harper, which is why I love the Harper list. Um, but I mean, Louise Erdrich, you know, we just had the Night Watchman come out. She's fantastic. I know, obviously all booksellers and librarians are, are big fans of hers. Um, Valentine. The recent one that is obviously, yes, big, big love for Valentine in many ways. And uh, Beth Wetmore, the author, loves 
loves her libraries. Um, and let's see, and then I have a lot of fun mystery thriller suspense books I've worked on, which is just like some of which I'll be talking about today, but um, it's really run the gamut and um, I've been very lucky. So two of those authors that I actually want to talk about right now, just give a quick shout out and congratulations to Kimberly McCrate and Liv Constantine, both wonderful Harper House authors that I have had the pleasure of working with for all of their books. Um, a Good Marriage and The Wife Stalker out in May and both Library Reads picks for May. Um, Kimberly McCray, she, she, you know, she had Reconstructing Amelia as we know and then she's back with, um, back onto the adult fiction side because she, she had a YA trilogy as well in between. Um, but A Good Marriage is so much fun. It is just another, it's a twist you won't see coming. It's, I could recommend this book to everyone. Um, my mom is reading right now and is devouring it. Um, it's just, it's really fun. It's a really fun book. And Kim's, Kim's a great author to work with. So thank you for all your support for her. Um, and then The Wife Stalker, Liv Constantine. I mean, the cover alone, it just screams summer. It screams, you know, fun, thriller, suspense. The Last Mrs. Parrish, you guys were a huge, huge supporters of. And this one is just so fun and twisty. Um, I really, I think I read it in one sitting. It, it's so much fun. So thank you. Another Library Reads pick. And I just appreciate your support as do the authors. They're, they're big fans of you guys. So. Well, if I can just interrupt you for a second, Lainey, you want to talk about our door-to-door? -door? With the authors, Liv Constantine? Yeah, we will have them on Facebook Live. Um, I don't oh, May 12th. It's May 12th. May 12th. <laughs> and um, we're so excited. We also had all the authors speak on our podcast the last episode last week. And they sent a fun little congratulatory thank you for being on the list. Um, our, uh, the, we have three books, actually. So we also will have Sonali Dave, who wrote uh, Recipe for Persuasion. So not only can you hear them on the podcast say thank you, but you can hear them on Door to Door, May 12th. May 12th, that'll be a Facebook Live on the Library Love Fest Facebook page. So uh, all three of them will be here uh, talking about their books and taking questions from all of you. So at two o'clock Eastern time, uh, hop on and say hi and uh, hear what they have to say and ask them any questions. So that's the, those are, are the HarperCollins authors for the May Library Reads list. Is it May? Yes. <laughs> yes, and then the we have, what's that? Forthcoming stuff, what you got? Yes, forthcoming. We have a, an amazing summer list and um, kind of an embarrassment of riches. Uh, but I did want to point out a book coming out in August um, from Diane Cook. So you might be familiar with her short story collection, Man v. Nature, came out a few years ago. Unbelievable writer. Some of those stories stick with me to this day. And um, she's back now with a novel called The New Wilderness. And the reason I wanted to bring it up today, not only because I love this book, uh, it's just becoming eerily uh, relevant in this day and age. Um, in short, it's a book about the not so distant future where, um, you know, nature, the wilderness has been kind of decimated and everyone's living in cities, etc. They do a kind of an experiment where they carve out a nature preserve, sort of a national park, and allow, slowly allow humans back into it to build a society and live amongst the wilderness. Um, I think it's just fascinating. We were talking about how now with um, this current crisis that, uh, you know, nature, animals, things are starting to kind of, you know, replenish and to come out of the wild and the air is cleaner and the, the earth is actually still and, um, you know, all of these, these interesting side effects from this uh, this crisis and the way people are living now. So I think it's just a very odd uh, coincidence that this book should be coming out this summer, but in and of itself, it's just a gorgeous novel. It's quite haunting, wonderful writing. And uh, it's kind of Helen Phillips meets Miranda July, in case that helps you know, set it up for you in any way, but it's, uh, it's fantastic. So that is a big recommendation for me coming out August 11th. Um, and then another book, I'm very, I, I could consider this author a house author, but she's back at Harper. She was with us a long time ago. She's back, Sue Miller, and the book is Monogamy. Oops, there we go. I just wanted to showcase, I have, was lucky enough to get an ARE at home. 
And it's hard to see on the screen, but the effects are so gorgeous on these leaves. And just a big shout out to Robin Billardello and Joe O'Neill. They just did an unbelievable job. Um, the book is, it's about a marriage, it's about a relationship, uh, but obviously it's, uh, there's a lot more to that. Um, you know, the title says, <laughs> says it all, I'd say, but it's about a complicated relationship and two very strong uh, personalities and how they evolve in that relationship. And then what happens when some secrets are revealed. Um, I don't wanna give away too much, but it's really, it's sort of a reflection on a marriage, it's a reflection on a relationship and how that looks sort of after the fact and looking back on on that relationship. Um, it's just, it's beautiful writing. It's Sue Miller at her best. Um, and also a nice little tidbit is one of the main characters is a bookseller, he owns a bookstore. So this is perfect for, for all book lovers. Um, and what's great too about welcoming back Sue Miller to Harper, uh, we'll be re-releasing some of the backlist that we have with her. Um, we'll be doing an audio in July and then trade paperbacks in August. And we've repackaged the entire um, set of books that we have. And this is just, this is the suite of covers. And I just am obsessed. I want to wallpaper my house in all of these <laughs> book covers. I think they're, they're fantastic. Um, so there'll be a nice little collection to have all together. Um, but that's, and that's monogamy. And we, we are gonna be doing some, you know, really a lot with this book. We're gonna do some discussion questions, things like that, because there's so much to dig into here. So we'll be sharing all of that with you soon. Oh. And uh, we're working on um, uh, inking a date for her to come on to uh, Door to Door to talk about her book. Uh, I read this book and absolutely loved it. Chris read this book. I mean, it's just so, it's so beautiful. I mean, you could talk it to death, but it's just, uh, it's just, it's one of those books that just, it just stays with you. You know, mm -hmm. you just, I just found myself thinking about those people over and over again. And yeah. that, so uh, it's, 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 it's a gem. It's a real gem. I love that book. Yes, it is. And, uh, and I've, again, it's people of all ages, people who have been married, people who haven't been married. I think it's just, it's in it's just a great read. So I could recommend it to anyone. Well, you know what, to that point, Katie. So Chris read it. And I, and I read it and we're obviously different in many ways, <laughs> um, but we, and, and, you know, we always talk about how we, the, the three of us have somewhat, somewhat different, you know, reading tastes and uh, what we like and what we don't like. And, and, but then there's always, there always seems to be a Venn diagram where that center part is like what hits all of our tender little hearts and, mm -hmm. So I love that Chris came, like, Chris, do you want to talk about it? Because I just love that you love it. Yeah, I, I was surprised because, again, it is something that I, I'm not married. I'm not even thinking about being married. That's enough about me. But the way she just helps you, she just, it, it, it feels effortless. I know it's not, but just the way she brings you into the mindset of characters with whom you have very little in common with, potentially. And, and she just flushes them out. And they just, they do, they, they leap from the page and just the passages, I, she, she writes about scenes and lighting and color and scent, just like every, she's a sensory type author, I feel like it's just, it's very immersive and, and beautiful. And again, just roping you in, you know, Graham, another, the, the husband is a character who runs a bookshop. And I just, when I start the book, I, I, I feel a little taken aback by him in certain ways. He just, he's so He's such a huge character in, in so many ways. But again, she just almost gently, it feels very gentle the way she brings you in and you just, you lose yourself in these characters um, and kind of like their emotional, personal, existential journeys. It's really something. So uh, yeah, I loved it. I just, I really, I'm, I, like you said, v, I could go on. Uh, again, Virginia, you did a great uh, book buzz on a previous door to door, one of our early door to door episodes. Um, so I'll provide a link in our comments for anyone who wants to watch the replay of that because I think it really encapsulates this book in a really, really wonderful way. So, yes, great book. Great book. And to that, just so you know, in the ARE, actually, we have a letter from Sue, um, and we'll make sure it's in you know the catalog and, and get that to you guys as well. But a lot of it, uh, this letter kind of explains how she came to write this book and it's not necessarily all about 
a marriage or a romantic relationship. And that's not exactly why she even wrote this book. Um, so it's really interesting. I don't want to give it away because it's a beautiful letter, but I think, um, you know, it's at face value about a marriage and about a relationship, a romantic relationship, but there's just a lot to be said about any human relationship you're having and how you can look back on it and how memory it distorts things or for better or worse. Um, so I think there's a lot to be picked up on here, you know, regardless of, of uh, you know, the marriage being the, the main part in this specific novel, but there's a, there's a lot to be said here. So I think everyone could find something. For sure. Well, excuse me, well, I need to go plug in my laptop. <laughs> I'm back. Start up. Okay. A sausage gets made. What's that? <laughs> yes. We're just showing behind the scenes. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. <sighs> Thank you. And no problem. And I have one more I want to give a shout out to. It's a little, it's, it's a little less of a serious topic um, than monogamy, but it's called Good Night Beautiful. It's on sale October 13th, and it's by Amy Malloy, who's the author of The Perfect Mother. Super fun, super thriller, suspense mystery. I read it so quickly. I've never been more surprised by a twist in my life. I, I Honestly, I had to go back and reread the book because I was like, how did she do this? How did she get me so, get me so good? Um, I really, you know, this is her second effort, and she really, it's, Fantastic. I love The Perfect Mother, but this I think is another level. Um, one, I think it was Kirkus or someone called her the master of clever misdirection. And that is very, very true in this book. Um, another fun little thing here is that there's a little bit, bit of an homage to another classic thriller novel. So um, for those that are fans of that writer, you might pick up on it. I don't want to give anything away, but it's once it popped up, I was so delighted. I thought it was such a great um, a great tactic on her part. It was really fun. Um, I'd say for comps, I mean, if you like The Silent Patient, um, The Last Mrs. Parish, even, I think those, while those are, you know, two very different books, I think things along that lines, you'll, you'll really like this one. It is just such a fun read. So quick. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait for other people to read it just so I could, you know, discuss it. So, um, and Amy's fantastic. And, um, you know, we had a great time with The Perfect Mother. And I think this is, just bringing her to another level. So hopefully you guys feel the same way. Well, those are, those are very exciting books. And yeah, I love The Perfect Mother and this one, so twisty. I mean, you're, you're a very good book talker, Miss Katie O'Callaghan. Oh, thank you. You should do it for a living. You should. <laughs> um, anyway, it's, uh, this has been great. Thank you for the, thank you for the heads up on uh, these great gems coming out from Harper and one of many imprints at Harper Collins Publishers. So mm -hmm. um, thank you. And uh, I don't know, if, unless there are any questions, I guess we will move on to more books and say, yes. thank you. well, thank you for having me on. This was so great. It was lovely to nice have to see your faces. <laughs> nice to Hello. see you. I have to go back Thanks, to my Katie. surfing. Yeah, go back to your surfing. <laughs> Out there. Some big waves. <laughs> All right, guys. Miss you. Bye. Miss Bye. <laughs> Bye. Katie was supposed to be in our tiki hut right before we all went out of New York. Oh, you know, remember? It was like it was just mm -hmm. happening. We'd sat right. down. It was like she was so excited to come to the tiki hut. So on St. Patrick's Day, that's when it was going to be. That's right. It was going to be St. Patrick's Day for Katie O'Callaghan. And we were going to have suds and uh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, but now we're home drinking. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. How is everyone? Everybody good? It's good. All right. Jennifer, Jennifer Winberry is very excited for Good Night Beautiful. Yeah, she should be. Should be. Yes. Did Jennifer Winberry read her first one, The Good Mother? Did you, Jennifer? Let us know if you're out there. I know you are. Let us know. Let us know. Uh, yeah, everyone's excited about Sue Miller. Oh. Loves the jackets, the reprints. Totally agreed. Yeah. yeah. And that um, galley, I saw a photo of it and it's really gorgeous. It's like the foil and yeah, pretty. Yeah. 
it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I do love that you and I both love it, Chris. We, I mean, obviously yeah. different coming at it from different perspectives. And it's just, I love that. It's just, it's just wonderful. And I, I, know, I was there, I mean, I've been in Harper a long time. I was there when we published her the first time around. So it's super exciting to have her back. And, um, and, I, and I'm looking forward to having her on our door to door. So speaking of door to door, I guess you guys know, every Tuesday, every Thursday, we're having lots of authors. So um, we have, um, let's, let's start talking about our books. There's, Chris, where do they find the schedule for what we have coming out? LibraryLoveFest.com? LibraryLoveFest.com. I'll provide a link to door to door and a link to the schedule. Next week's schedule will be up tomorrow. So that we don't have the e-card yet for that, but um, we do have Facebook events created for everything. And we have some big stuff next week. Next week's crazy, actually. Like big names after big names after big names. Um, so if you go to our Facebook page, which you know where to get to because you're watching us on Facebook, um, click the events link because we have uh, an event for Tuesday with Sarah McLean and Susan Elizabeth Phillips. Yes, what? yes, that's happening um, for real, for real. I'm so excited. Yeah. That's happening. So that's Tuesday, two o'clock. Sarah McLean and Susan Elizabeth Phillips. Yes. I have a picture. So this is Sarah McLean's book. Can you see? There you go. Beautiful. Okay. And then, so Daring and the Duke. And then I have the other one. It's going to take me. I have like 10,000 jackets because we're so excited to talk about every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. And I hear Susan Elizabeth Phillips. So they are both going to be on next Tuesday, April 28th, two o'clock, Library Love Fest Facebook page. <clears throat> Come with your questions and your love. Okay. And then we'll talk about more. Maybe I'll just jump in and talk about um, uh, next Thursday, April 30th, we have uh, his, we're going to focus on historical fiction. So we're going to have Beatrice Williams and Stephen Kiernan. Um, so, uh, so, so excited. Universe of Two, do we have that jacket? We do. Okay. So maybe some of you were at the PLA conference in Nashville, which feels like a very long time ago. Um, but we had galleys of this, and uh, all we had to say was historical fiction based on the Manhattan Project, and these were getting scooped up like crazy. I don't know why these are looking. Okay, there you go. So, uh, so, so, um, universe of two. This is um, so Stephen Kiernan. He wrote uh, the Baker's Secret, the Curiosity. This is a novel. This is a fictionalized account uh, of the life of Charlie Fisk who was this mathematician who was drafted into the Manhattan Project. Um, so when this book starts out, you meet him and he is um, he's very sweet. He's this brilliant guy, young man. And he meets uh, this woman who will later become his wife. And I've often said, and I just said it earlier today because we were talking to some librarians, Gary, about this, that you feel like it's sort of like, um, like you, like you're watching an old Judy Garland movie from the '40s. It's very sweet. It's of its, of, it's of its time, and they're sort of you know dancing around each other. And and so why I mention this is because a I find it very endearing, and also you just sort of learn who he is. He's he's a smart man. You see, there he's gentle. He's very sweet with her. They end up you know getting married, and so you're along the journey with them. But when he uh, starts this. Uh, job working on the Manhattan Project, there are a lot of things he can't share with her. Um, and he, as, as it sort of uh, evolves and unfurls, uh, it becomes a real struggle. He has a real struggle with his conscience about you know, what he's doing, what are the implications of all of this? And he can't talk to her about it. It's, it's all confidential. So, um, so this is their, this is his life. And, um, and how he, uh, I don't know, how he navigates these waters, you know, and, uh, and how he comes out the other side, which I think is very interesting. On Edelweiss, uh, the author has written this behind the book piece, which I, I just love it. I'm just gonna read this first two sentences. Um, the secret behind my novel, Universe of Two, is that it is based on a real person. Four years ago, I read an essay in the Georgia Review about a man 
who worked on building the atomic bomb and later went on to become a world famous cathedral organ builder. I remember exactly where I was sitting because I lifted my head up and said out loud, that is a novel. The man was named Charlie Fisk. And as I dug into his past, I realized there were numerous reasons that this story would not provide a coherent narrative. And so I used two aspects of his life, bomb builder, organ maker, destroyer, creator, creator as the skeleton on which I built a fully fleshed fictional character. And this is all so, uh, it's, it's enlightening. You learn a lot. Uh, he, the author certainly learned a lot when he started to dig and, 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 and find out more and more about what, what they went through. Um, and that he did in the end become like this man who was, Charlie Fisk became uh, this organ builder. I mean, he just like went in a completely different direction. So this is his life. I don't need to go into all the details because reading it is most of the fun. But um, it was all of the fun. But that is um, that is Universe of, of Two by Stephen Kiernan. It uh, goes on sale May 5th. Um, and as I say, he is going to be on uh, Door to Door with Beatrice Williams, who gave this book such a wonderful quote. I mean, she just raves about the details um, of you know his research. So um, uh, I encourage you to come on if you can and, um, and check him out. So that is Universe of Two by Stephen Kiernan. And I will tell you in a second my notes for, um, hang on, Beatrice Williams. All right, now I've misplaced them. So wait, so here it is, sorry. Sorry, it was in my historical fiction section. Okay, uh, Beatrice Williams loves this book and says, rarely does historical fiction get everything so right as universe of two. Compelling characters, faithful detail, a story packed with unexpected twists and a, sh and a sure authentic voice that never wavers. She's so right, it's so good, you have to read it. Okay, her last flight, Beatrice Williams, on sale June 30th. Um, and this is um, about a photographer and a war correspondent. So it's 1947. And this war correspondent, uh, Janie Everett, um, arrives at this in, in this remote uh, fishing village, uh, surfing village on um, Kauai in Hawaii uh, to research um, a biography of this uh, forgotten aviation pioneer, uh, Sam Mallory who had joined the loyalist forces in the Spanish Civil War and never returned. So um, she was obsessed with his fate and started to track down people who may be able to fill in some of the blanks, including a woman named Irene Lundquist who opened this like island hopping airline little company. And um, she believes that she might have been this other woman, Irene Foster, who was this Sam Mallory's uh, one time um, student and flying partner. And but uh, she says no, and so she denies any connection to this to this uh, to this person. Um, but um, so this is so this is sort of the story. It's a little bit of detective work, and it's a little bit uh, it's a lot of history. Um, it's it's got a terrific um, duel between these two women and what is going on there. And um, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, you all know. Beatrice Williams, her she's she leaves no stone unturned when she does her her research, and so and she hasn't here either. So um, I think that uh, it's going to be very interesting to hear these two authors together talk about their books uh, and what they did. I find fascinating is like what did they do to you know unearth all this? Where did they get their? How did they? What was their process? Um, they're both terrific. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing them, and I hope that you that you can come and join. And that's going to happen on. Thursday, April 30th at two o'clock. So come here about some historical fiction and learn about these wonderful characters. I love this comment from Susan Riley who says, Beatrice Williams is the nicest woman. I love how she brings out the humanity and even the smallest characters in her book. So thank you, Susan. I know that is a sign of a really talented author. She's uh, so lovely too. She now is. she's come to ALA, she's come to PLA, remember in Philadelphia, oh my God. They, librarians love her and she loves libraries. She's just, she's just really wonderful, very authentic and just so smart anyway. And Stephen Kiernan has been at ALA too. So, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Mute me. Mute, okay. Uh, I'll go next. And so I'm gonna be talking about an October release that we're really excited about. 
uh, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. So I've been waiting to share this book with you all because what piqued my interest initially was that this is a bit of a, a somewhat of a departure for Ruman, who wrote Rich and Pretty, uh, and he really kind of tackles like upper middle class society in really nuanced ways. Um, but this is a departure that has a dystopian kind of not supernatural, but like a thriller element to it, uh, where it's basically following a single family who is trying to get away um, just for like a summer vacation, just, you know, get out. And they rent out this house uh, in, it's uh, upstate uh, New York. And basically what happens is they rent out this house and then suddenly power and communications go kaput. No one knows why there's no communications at all. It's just this blackout that swept through New York. And then the family who owns this house returns. And suddenly you have this very like tight space, strangers facing each other in the midst of really uncertain times. But to add even more tension to this, the family that owns this house is a black family. And you know, they're, they're, they're well-to-do, they're well-spoken. There's nothing wrong with this family at all. But the fact that there's all this tension Ruman just manages to kind of like peel away layers and really inspect, you know, what's going on between these families. And it's just done in such a brilliant way. And what really set me off in this book, um, we have a Harper sales rep, Kate McCune, who's one of the most eloquent book talkers I've ever seen. She's, she's brilliant. And uh, she sent out this letter to the sales staff that she let us kind of share on our blog. That it's a great write up on the book. Um, and I'm just going to read a quick section of it, and I'll share the link in the comments, but it says, the sense of texture and nuance Alam brings to his characters is on full display here. Um, let's see, but this time he has a much larger, darker agenda. To start, this is one of the scariest books I've ever read. Probably wasn't a great idea to read it on, on vacation last weekend, but it's such a character-driven page turner that I couldn't stop even as it scared me silly. Um, and it, it, I know, again, it's, it's weird when book publications align with real world, you know, events. And obviously we're dealing with unexpected turbulence in our day-to-day -day lives. And I think this is a book that's really fascinating on its own, but also in the midst of all of this. And again, it's just such an insightful, piercing look at what can happen when we're facing our greatest dangers and some of our worst tendencies are revealed. Um, so again, I'll post a link to Kate's full review on our blog. I highly recommend it. And now the eGalley is available on Edelweiss and that galley. So we'll link to that as well. Um, a really, really fascinating, successful departure for a monologue. So that's Leave the World Behind and it's coming, uh, let's see, October 6th. But again, the eGalley is available. So that is it for me for now. Hey, I want to talk about a historical fiction. Everybody is excited for this. Um, this is Miss Graham's Cold War Cookbook by Celia Rees. So this, we have a little bit, it comes out in July and you might know the author. She's a big YA novelist. Um, she's really big all over the world, but she lives in Britain and she has um, like Witch Child was one of her books, but this is her first adult debut novel. So in this historical fiction, World War II, we all we all love it. We all love historical fiction, especially it's so popular in World War II right now. But um, in this, I'm always looking what what makes it different. And what's cool about this one is it's it's set in the Cold War, as you can tell, um, but right after the war. So that moment of like reconstruction. And that's not really a place that a lot of people have explored in the, the fiction section. So that and also you have a female spy, which is always cool. And in this story, you know, if you're a fan of the Huntress, that really kind of reminded me of that, like very, um, very like, what what is the spy life, especially living back then? It's very fun. Um, so in this story we have Edith Graham, who is Miss Graham, and she is living in Britain. She's from Britain and she speaks German and she is recruited by this control commission that is setting up all of these uh, schools in Germany after all the destruction to kind of rebuild it and make it um, work uh, after war. And she sees that they're going, so she wants to get out of out of Britain, wants to do something different. But then she is kind of recruited by this mission that 
yeah, you're going to go set up a school, but there's also something else we want you to do. And her cousin Leo is also working in it. So he kind of recruits her and tells her that this man that they um, knew in like a past life before the war, who she got really close to, uh, Count Kurt von Stavno is um, actually wanted for a lot of war crimes. And so she just can't believe that someone she knows and thought she trusted could be doing all this. So now he might be in the area that she's going to. And she makes like this perfect spy because her sister is there to take care of her mom. So she doesn't really have anything to pull her. She's not married, she doesn't have kids to take care of. And, and also she's kind of, you know, she blends in really quietly. She's kind of ordinary looking, she can speak German. So might as well go on an adventure. And but then she decides how is she gonna tell them what is happening if everyone's looking at her mail and she's supposed to be this teacher. So she finds a recipe book and this cookbook and she makes a code and she's gonna send letters back and forth. Um, it's really fun. And what I think is really cool about this story is that there's a behind the book on Edelweiss, you have to check it out because um, Celia actually um, had an aunt that did this in the Cold War. And so she went to a, museum with her daughter not too long ago and they had a whole section about people who maybe gave intelligence and she was like I think my aunt could have been a spy <laughs> so she said I don't know for sure but it was a fun jumping point um to make this kind of fake life around what her aunt, what she thought her aunt might be doing so you have to check it out that's Miss Graham's Cold War Cookbook by Celia Rees and that comes out in July <laughs> just kidding um <laughs> how are we doing as far as our friends on facebook are they still with us they're so with us yeah really? yeah, yeah oh yeah what's going on yeah. out there what are they saying historical fiction is my genre that's what Woo -woo! Death said. <laughs> i love it oh. um Interesting, Patricia. So it sounds like my regarding uh, leave the world behind. Sounds like my frequent. Do we? I have a list. Uh, sounds like my frequent dreams about returning to my old house, but another family is living there, and they'd say it's okay for me to be there too. That would be the nice version of this book. Um, and Tara O'Donnell says, "Happy World Book Day." I didn't know that. Very interesting. Um, yeah. So, but lots of love, lots of viewers, lots of Great. smiley faces. Yay, we love you guys. We love you for listening. Um, so we thought we'd maybe do a couple of uh, quickies. We should start calling them that. And then let's see what happens. Look at them. They're like, no. <laughs> okay. So also, I, I am pushing to do a Friday afternoon uh, video series called No Pants Friday. So what? What does everybody think of that? You can only come on if you're not wearing pants. So, I mean, you can only watch it if you're not wearing it. Librarians, come on. I know you want to. What are they saying? <laughs> well, it's a little bit of a delay, so we'll let we'll, we'll say it. But <laughs> it's silence. I think they're <laughs> chewing on it still. <laughs> well, we mentioned that book that Chris, what was Pants Drunk that one time? Oh, Pants Drunk. Pants Drunk, yeah. That's the book we all need right now. Pants you know what? I'll link to it in the comments. Absolutely. It was that yeah. was one of the funniest things ever we did at Tiki Hut. <laughs> it was this like Danish thing about right when it was yeah. like everything that you should do just to make yourself happy. And one of the things there was an actual name for it to sit around, right? It's and home with a pants on. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. It's, so we've got finished. comments. All right. So, <laughs> um. Someone's let's see. Elizabeth Silver said, "What about shorts?" Jennifer said, "I'm available on Fridays." Hey, uh, Janet Lockhart said, "How do you know I'm not wearing pants now?" <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> Everyone says, "Why not?" Sounds like we need the skirts then. No pants. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're here for you. <laughs> what about right. what about pajama pant Friday? Oh, hmm. I'm down with that. I'm also down for onesies, you yeah. know? So listen, let's do this one day and just come dressed as you are, but it's gotta be super comfy, whatever that means. I love Deb Cassidy's comment. She said, I've decided that if a colleague shows up to a Google meet in a collared shirt, he's not wearing pants. So that's, <laughs> it's a dead that, giveaway. Yeah. That is very true. 
I may say from experience. <laughs> it's a good read. Though. I'm ready for bed. I put jewelry on for the first time in like a month today. Wow. Just for you guys. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Well, so let's talk a little bit about Sarah Paretsky because we love Hawk. Now, I don't know if you guys were able to uh, watch last week, was it last week? We had Sarah Paretsky and James Rollins on and they were amazing. Um, so if you can, you should go back. If you're not on, what am I gonna say? Of course you're on Facebook, you're listening to us right now for God's sake. But <laughs> for those who aren't on Facebook, your friends and colleagues, we have everything that we do here is the video will be on YouTube. So just type in Library Love Fest and all the stuff that we've been doing. Uh, is there. But Sarah Paretsky and James Rollins came on. They spoke a little bit in the beginning with each other and about each other's books. They were very sweet with each other. And then um, what? Then they we put James in the green room and Sarah talked and vice versa. I can't remember who went first. I think it was Sarah. It was amazing. Um, so and just lovely things that she had to say about librarians. If you have a chance, you should listen to what she said. She's really something else. Um, so you, I'm sure you're all very familiar with her Wachowski um, series, and this is the next installment in it. This is Deadland, um, and it just went on sale uh, on the 21st. So um, uh, it's gotten such incredible reviews. I mean, they're really, um, you know, they're, I have pages of them, honestly, but um, the Washington Post, uh, uh, the booklist gave it a star review. Uh, Kirkus, everybody, they love it because she's so smart. Um, and um, uh, let's see, I'll tell you, Seattle Times says, Deadland is the, is the latest of Sarah Paresky's swift and superb book starring V.I. Warshawski, a tough and deeply principled Chicago private eye. Always passionate about social issues, uh, V.I. becomes enmeshed with a community action group. It's really interesting. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a cool story about real estate and uh, shenanigans and under, under I mean, yeah. All the, all the crooked stuff that goes on in every city, but she certainly nails it. Um, a booklet says this is a series bar raiser, a high point in Paretsky's long running and much loved series. The, the reviews go on and on. I mean, it's Sarah Paretsky. Um, but as they say, she had lovely, lovely things to say about you librarians. She is your number one fan, no, no joke. So if you can go to the uh, video to hear what she had to say, you should. Uh, she has um, a collection of um, detective short stories that's going on sale June 30th. It's called Love and Other Crimes. Um, and so many of these feature Wachowski, including a, br a brand new VI story. Uh, this got, a star not surprising, starred review from Kirkus um, uh, that says the most distinguished mystery collection so far this year. It was praised by Booklist, also a starred review, saying wisely provocative and zestfully entertaining. Um, it just, eh, you know, PW says the love that really comes through in each story is the love and empathy Paretsky has for her all too human characters. I think that says it more than anything else because she is so, um, yeah, she's the heart the size of Kansas. She's really quite something and it's just so smart. Anyway. We love her and we love James Rollins. James Rollins is so interesting, the way he approaches his books and God, he just, he drills down, boy. He's such a smart, smart man too. So if you can check those, check that video out. We have some comments about the door to door. A lot of people were saying right after they went out and bought Rollins audiobook right after. Oh, that's so cool. And then um, hearing her, re uh, Sarah read the first chapter was amazing. It was. It was also quite touching because as she had said, that was the first book that she wrote without her husband as her first reader, he passed away last year. And so this was, that was, you know, sort of uncharted waters for her. And so it was very touching, um, but she's just, um, she's just lovely. Also, we posted the, the speech that she gave at the Carnegie Awards um, a couple of years ago in Chicago at ALA. So uh, that's, that's up on um, Library Love Fest as well. And I think it is. If it's not, we'll put it up there. We did send it out. Anyway, who wants to go next? Do you have more? We have more. Um, I have two more, in fact. But the first person I just want to call out, because the book's on sale, and she was amazing, and on Door to Door, uh, The Ancestor by Danielle Tresoni. So she was on a week or week and a half ago on Door to Door, 
Uh, she is the best-selling author, author of the Angelology trilogy. Um, it's a series. Uh, and this is a very gothic, twisty novel. I know we have a lot of library fans already out there. So if you are watching and you read The Ancestor and loved it, shout it out. Um, and this is, I think it's a great concept. And uh, Danielle did write a really cool behind the book piece for this, which we'll link to. Um, but it basically asks a question like, what if you receive suddenly just a letter in the mail that you are part of this old kind of almost extinct royal family and you've just inherited um, this dark castle in this foreign country of which you know nothing about. And that's what happens in this story. So Alberta, who goes by Bert, is living a pretty normal everyday life in Hudson Valley, New York. Uh, and she receives a letter and she is actually Countess Alberta Montabianco. And she's inherited a noble title and a role in this really remote area of Italy. Uh, and Danielle actually traveled to this area and there's these really great pictures that she provided um, in her behind the book piece on Edelweiss about some of her research. Thank you, Lainey, for pulling that up. Um, and yeah, and it is just like, a, but of course her inheritance comes with more than she could have anticipated. So it's a twisty thriller and again, just great sense of place, just dark, gothic, fully immersive, kind of like a finish in one sitting type of book. Um, and again, Danielle's just been so supportive of libraries and she was on our door to door. So we'll link to that where she talks more about the book. She's just a really fascinating author. So we always appreciate her. And she, again, just speaking of past lives, came and saw us at PLA, I think it was. It was, yes, the Public Library Association. And uh, oh, Virginia on mute. Midwinter, it's Philly. Mid it right? Yes, you're right. Yes, sorry. Yes. My God. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, my mind. Um, it was midwinter, not that long ago. Actually. We're all in the same boat. Sad. Um, but yeah, so she met with librarians and again, just really cool person, great author, great setup for this book. So it is on sale now. Uh, I don't know if the link is posted. If not, we'll share it so you can get your copy. Let's see. So that's I have one more book, but I'll I'll save it. I'll let someone else talk. I have two as well. Um, so I wanted to shout out, I don't have to spend too much time on it because it's one of those that's so needy, you really have to, to really read it. But um, we had this book in 2014, The Lost, Girl, or Lost Girls um, by Robert, Col Robert Colker. And it's now on Netflix, which we had on our blog, um, a link with to Netflix and to the book and a little bit about it. So check that out if you want. Well, I'll put a link um, for more information. But I just watched the Netflix show last night. I know Virginia, you've seen it, and it's rough. It's it's hard. It's a a story of in 2010, a, a girl goes missing, running for her life in Long Island, and her. It just kind of sets off this um, series of events where her mom is looking for her, and the police are not listening, and then you know, other bodies start popping up. And so they decide they have a serial killer um, on their hands. And it, it's, it's about women who maybe are in jobs that are looked down upon or working class women who just are not taken seriously and the police didn't do everything that they could have. Um, anyway, it's hard but I think you need to watch it because you need to know what these women went through and and the mom of this girl is like the star like she pushes so hard for it it's it's heartbreaking um but if you're a true crime fan you're gonna you're gonna love it but um I think like I always say agency is a big thing in the community right now and representing women maybe who are in lower classes or maybe thought to be in high risk jobs, um, that doesn't matter, they were killed. So it really highlights that. And uh, there's a new epilogue in the book, they put out a new version. So in this paperback version, you can read more about what happened to those women. So that's Lost Girls and I will link to that in a minute. Okay. Um, Chris, do you wanna go back and do another one? Sure, I'll do one more. Um... Another good friend of the Library of Lefebvre's team and libraries at large, uh, Have You Seen Me by Kate White. 
which goes on sale next Tuesday. So this is a good time to call it out. This is a standalone thriller from Kate White, who's a New York Times bestselling author. Um, she does the Bailey Wagon ser mystery series, which is long running a beloved series. Um, but it's always exciting to have a standalone to introduce new readers. Um, and I think this is a great leaping off point for a lot of people if you haven't read Kate. Great setup, this is about a woman successful woman finance journalist who basically shows up to her job in Manhattan one day, every, you know, normal day, nothing particularly crazy about it, except for everyone there is kind of surprised to see her because she hasn't worked there in five years. So you have this gap where she has, does not know where she's been for the past five years. And obviously there's something very, very wrong. Uh, so there's kind of like ticking clock on it where she's trying to figure out what is going on. Um, I love this quote by Kimberly Bell, who is the best-selling author of Dear White. Kate White has done it again. Her latest novel, Have You Seen Me? stars Allie, who shows up at her old job with no memory of why she shouldn't be there. White starts with a bang and keeps the suspense high throughout, weaving a labyrinth of buried memories and disturbing revelations that blur the lines between what's true and what's not. An addictive up all night thriller. Yeah, just great, fun, gripping reads always by Kate White. Um, so you'll be able to pick this up soon. We'll link to the hc.com page. Um, yeah, we're always excited to have a new Kate White. So um, that's my last book. Have you seen it? Right. Um, so it's weird because, you know, we usually are only talking about books that are coming out, you know, months and months and months from now, which of course we are still doing. But we also think that in this time, you know, we should really focus on a few books that are just about to come out or just did come out um, that are available as ebooks. If you can, you know, looking for um, patrons are looking for some good stuff that they can get now. And so this is why we're sort of mixing it up. Um, and to that end, I want to talk about a book called The Silent Treatment, which I've talked about before. It's by Abby Graves. Um, it grieves and it's, it went on sale April 7th, um, and it's a debut and it's about this couple, uh, this married couple who they have been together for a very long time, but for the last six months, they have not spoken one word to each other. Nothing. It's mute. Um, they still live in the same house. They sleep in the same bed. They have their meals. It seems fine, except there are no words spoken. Um, um, Maggie thinks there, she may have, uh, she may have an idea uh, what's going on, but um, it's all very uncomfortable and it just, the pressure just builds and builds. And then one morning, um, Frank, the husband comes out to the kitchen and finds Maggie collapsed at the table um, with an empty package of pills next to her. And so um, he, she's rushed to the hospital, put into a medically induced coma and there now they wait to see what happens. And, um, and while this is unfolding, um, you sort of get a peek into what, what's gone on there, what has really been going on. Um, so, I, so I just wanna read you a couple of things. Um, this is perfect for book clubs. Um, it's for fans of Me Before You. Um, this touches on love and family and mental illness and motherhood and living life to its fullest every day. Um, it's also for fans of The Notebook. I've pages of quotes for this as well, raves. Um, Jillian McMillan, um, a novel that pulses with emotional tension. Abby Greaves masterfully unpicks a history of ordinary lives facing extraordinary challenges. I found it impossible to look away from the relationship at the heart of this novel. Susan Wiggs says, Abby Greaves held me spellbound with this intimate emotional story of the brutal power of silence and ostracism. Yet this deep dive into a troubled marriage is ultimately uplifting as Frank and Maggie make their way through the challenges of isolation, mental health, aging, and the yearning for connection. Keep the tissues handy for this lovely read. Um, again, it's a debut. I just went on sale. It's called The Silent Treatment, and I hope you uh, can pick it up and um, take a look because it's really, it's really something. We have five minutes left. Uh, are you both of you done? I mean, I could keep going for forever, but at some point, 
you because know. I have two, but I'll do a lightning round. If do it. Okay. So showing you something she's not telling us. Oh yeah. We love Darcy Bell. You might know her from a simple favor, the movie that just came out. This one super campy and fun, just like the one before. Woman's daughter goes missing and her her brother has a new girlfriend. Thinks maybe the the girlfriend has something to do with it. And you hear alternate alter they alternate between the two women. So you might know maybe they have a little some secrets between them or that they're keeping hidden. Um, so I'll leave you with that as a taste. And the last one I was gonna talk about, um, both of which of these that you can get now. Um, and so then I wanted to talk about Queenie. Oh, can you see it? Yeah, okay. Um, Queenie Malone. Uh, sorry guys, I'm having, I got a little out of my, my rhythm. I had all of these together and then, okay, well, so you, can, you can see the cover. Yeah. And so let's move on to the last one, Queenie Malone's Paradise Hotel by Ruth Hogan. Our colleague Kim la 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 loves this book and, um, about a woman who, her and her mother moved to this hotel to kind of get away after her father goes missing and then her mother sends her off to a um to a boarding school and she doesn't really have any answers so now she's coming back uh and one and, and searching for all these answers and uh learning the truth of these relationships that maybe she didn't know in the past um but if you liked her previous novel keeper of lost things then you're really gonna love this one and it is uh it is already out so you can go get it I'm just going to make a quick shout out for um, Jason Rosenthal's My Wife Said You May Want to Marry Me, which just, uh, just I believe that just went on sale April 21st. So, um, I, you know, probably um, many of you read um, the Amy Krauss Rosenthal, the children's um, um, art of, why am I trying to, why am I, author, thank you. Um, she uh, penned a modern love column in the New York Times in March of 2017 called, You May Want to Marry My Husband. And that appeared 10 days before her death from ovarian cancer. If you haven't read this, go to Edelweiss. It's there, read it. It's unbelievable. It is a love letter to her husband about her husband and sort of in that, you know, wanted uh, the, you know, the love, um, the personal ads. Um, in that sort of like, you know, creative play on, on a personal ad in which she encourages her husband to go on and find happiness after her demise. That uh, column went viral and reached, I don't know how many millions of people now. I mean, it's, I don't know, it was 5 million. It's gotta be a ton more than that now. It's unbelievable. Anyway, very, very sad, very touching um, and a real, or it's just an absolute love letter. And in response to that, her husband wrote a book called My Wife Said You May Want to Marry Me, a memoir. And this is all about um, his experience, letting her go and healing and, and, um, and you know, with their children um, and what life is like uh, for him, what, what that whole experience was like. Uh, he re reflects on uh, her gift to him and um, this fresh start where they say he has to fill up this empty space with a new story. So this is his story. Um, as I say, it just went on sale. Jennifer Garner, the actress and author, loves this book. She just posted it to her Instagram, 9 million followers on Instagram. She calls it a beautiful book that should be on your next quarantine reads list. Uh, he was on CBS uh, Sunday morning. I watched that. That was really touching. And um, the, the, just check it out. Just, just read the column first. You will you will not forget it. And then it, I, and then read this book because it is really, it's a, it's almost like a conversation between the two of them. Right. So that's, um, my wife said, you may, may want to marry me by Jason Rosenthal. So powerful, so touching, so honest. And that just went on sale April 21st. So are we pretty much done? It's three o'clock. I think we got them all in, right? Um, just, uh, just to recap again, every Tuesday and Thursday, we're, we're do, they're doing this or we're having authors on. Um, we have, um, so we have, again, Sarah McLean and Susan Elizabeth Phillips on next Tuesday, the 28th. And then we have historical fiction with Beatrice Williams and Stephen Kiernan on that following Thursday. 
And then we go into May and we have almost the whole month filled up. We have Laura Lippman on May 5th and we have um, Ivy Pakoda. Uh, she's wonderful. And she has a new book out called These Women and you're gonna love that. Um, and uh, she wrote Visitation Street. She's just amazing. And Elizabeth uh, Thomas who wrote The Catherine House. So that's next Thursday. We have Library Reads authors on. We have a lot of stuff going on. And you can find all of it on librarylovefest.comalicious. Yeah, a reminder tomorrow, the Ancestor authored um, Danielle Tristoni is going to be on our Instagram taking over at 1 p.m. Eastern. She's going to show us her writing desk. And we already got a glimpse on Facebook Live and she looks like it looks like she has a cool little study. So um, be sure to check all day. She's going to be on our feed and it'll be fun. Lainey's done this really cool thing where she's asked authors to like take over our Instagram page and just like have at it. So Lainey, who else do you have coming up? We have lots of fun ones coming up. We, and well, just quick shouts in the past that you can already see because they live there forever. So you can see um, our first inaugural one was uh, Talia Hibbert. Um, she talked about uh, her books for the, the Brown sisters. They were fun. And then we also had um, Patty Dan, who was super sweet and had really cool, cool pictures to share. Um, the right sisters, the right the Wright sisters, yes. And then, so this week is Daniel Trussoni. Next week is going to be Jessica Caramore, the poet. And that, shout out to that book. If you haven't read that book of poetry, um, it's called We Want Our Bodies Back. And I actually had a, a finished, it's paperback, and I had a finished version, and it, it's just stunning. It's a beautiful cover, but um, really, really beautiful poetry in there. Um, Can you throw the jacket then, real quick? Uh, yeah. well, Chris, um, can you, well, Lainey goes on with the big one on May. I feel, I mean, oof, Jessica, Chris, if you'll, yeah, I got it. okay, thank you. Um, and so let's see who else. So, ooh, we have an exciting one after, so Jessica's next week. And then after that, we have Sarah Beth Durst. That's exciting. She, uh, her book, Race of Sands just came out yesterday or Tuesday. I don't know what day it is. And that one is really cool. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like kind of a felty cover. It's, it's so cool. And so she spells her first and last name with a lowercase and I always forget. So that's not a mistake. It's how she spells it. Um, should I go in on or should I wait? Well, I think you should end with the big one on May 15th. Oh, I don't know. Are they ready for that? <laughs> yeah, they are. Okay, so we have a big reveal on May 15th. We're going to have Karen Slaughter on our Instagram and she has done such cool things already on her own and just go look at it like it'll make you smile. She does all these interviews and, and she's just dancing on social media, which is what the world needs more of. So really excited to have her on May 15th. So that's on May 15th, which is Friday and the day before. On uh, May 14th, she's going to uh, be interviewed or interview her editor, Emily Crump. We'll see what happens there. But, you know, if you go to Karen's Facebook page, she's pretty amazing. She's been interviewing people um, in, the, in the publishing industry and the, in the book world. She interviewed the State Librarian from Georgia. Um, that's a very interesting, sort of in the face of this pandemic and how people are dealing. So um, th that's very um, illuminating to say the least. So I, I encourage you to go to her, her page and see what she's doing. And in fact, today, Chris, you wanna talk about, you took care of this today, her event. Oh yeah, and I'll show the link, um, but she is actually going to be interviewed on the Charlotte Mecklenburg uh, Facebook Live. So they're hosting a virtual event um, with Karen. And I think this is a great example of any of you are doing programming and are looking to set up virtual author events on Facebook or something else. Um, we have, we have a guide to that, but I think this is a good example. So I'll share the link, but yeah, Karen's going to be on the Char Charlotte Mecklenburg Library Foundation. And I think the library itself is going to share it as well. So you can go to their page. I'll share the link and you can watch Karen be interviewed. It'll be fascinating. I think it's at seven o'clock. I mean, double check that. I'm pretty sure though. Um, again, all the details will be in the event that I'm posting in the comments section. So um yeah that's super exciting yeah but chris has been doing an amazing job 
trying to get authors out to libraries virtually and um, Lainey's doing the Instagram takeover. We're all doing these door to door Facebook lives and it's kind of, it's kind of crazy, but it's a challenge, but it's, it's a, a challenge is a fun thing. And we're, you know, we're so happy to, to connect with all of you and, and, and spread the word about our authors and our books. So thank you so much for, um, for listening, for logging on. Anybody else want to, anybody in, on the chat room want to say anything? Well, we're excited bye. about Karen Slaughter. I also okay. put a link in there for you guys to like us on Instagram so you can see all those updates. Um, yeah, Jennifer Wimberry said, thank you. It's a great respite from life. So that's very mm. sweet. Um, yeah, lots of love. All right. Well, happy National Library Week. Happy thank you. Not happy, but just thank you. <laughs> we celebrate you. We appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. We bring you more authors and books. So until then, take care of yourselves. Be well. And uh, bye. All the love. Bye. All the love. Bye.